and welcome to this first look exploring session, our second session looking at the tragedy of Mariam by Elizabeth Carey, uh, which we are enjoying enormously. Uh, we've done an awful lot of uh, on this play already on the podcast. There is a full cast audio adaptation in the works. There has been one in, in the works for about two years now. Uh, Plague got sort of in the way of that. Um, it's all recorded. It's mostly edited. It's not finished. Um, but there are hours of me pontificating about the play available on spoilers episodes on the tragedy of Mariam, uh, which uh, this will hopefully not add to because I'm sure everyone in the room will share their opinions rather than just mine. Um, we're going from if you're looking in your uh, a, a, an edition at home you will see this marked as act three scene three but we're calling it act three scene two because that's the most sensible way to ma ma label it. It, it it's silly uh the other way um to anyway we're going to read till the end of the play and so reading today mariam is me rachel actor on the east coast uh, reading Sohemus, uh, Ferroris, and Constabarus is... Alan Scott, based in Suffolk. Uh, reading Salome, Butler, <laughs> Babas' first son, and Doris is... Hi, my name's Elizabeth Amisu, and I'm an author based in Romford. And reading Chorus, Nuntio, Soldier, and Babas' second son is... Hi, I'm Eric, and I'm afraid. I'm very afraid. <laughs> and I'm your host, Robert Crichton. I'll be reading occasionally, uh, reading Herod, but I'm thinking we'll probably just pass Herod around the room uh, when people are free. Uh, otherwise, I will read the very occasional stage direction that we are given. We do not get given very many. So uh, the story so far, Herod is dead until everyone finds out Herod's alive. And the royal court um, spends an awful lot of time changing their plans as they whiff and waft between uh, the do various positions as to what Herod's aliveness or deadness means to them. Basically, first half of the play is sort of Schrodinger's Herod um, is, is, is very much a sort of situation there. However, we find out that Herod is definitely alive and that means that the forces of Salome can now work their magic against Constabarus and, and Mariam. And uh, next, to find out the news as to what happened to Herod, uh, will indeed be Mariam herself. So Act 3, Scene 2, you can call it Scene 3 as much as you like, it's a lie. Uh, enter Mariam and Sohemus. Sohemus, tell me what the news may be that makes your eyes so full, your cheeks so blue. I know not how to call them. Ill for me, to sure they are. Not so, I hope, for you. Herod. Oh, what of Herod? Herod lives. How? Lives? What, in some cave or forest hid? Nay, back returned with honour. Caesar gives him greater grace than e'er Antonius did. Foretell the ruin of my family. Tell me that I shall see our city <laughs> burned. Tell me I shall a death disgraceful die, but tell me not that Herod is returned. Be not impatient, madam but be mild. His love to you again will soon be bred. I will not to his love be reconciled. With solemn vows I have forsworn his bed. But you must break those vows. I'll rather break the heart of Miriam. Cursed is my fate. But speak no more to me. In vain ye speak to live with him I so profoundly hate. Great queen, you must to me your pardon give. Sohemus cannot now your will obey. If your command should me to silence drive, it, it were not to obey, but to betray. Reject and slight my speeches, mock my faith, scorn my observance, call my counsel naught, though you regard not what Sohemus saith, yet will I ever freely speak my thought. I fear ere long I shall fair Mariam see in woeful state, and by herself undone. Yet for your issue's sake, more temperate be, the heart by affability is won. And must I to my prison turn again? Oh, now I see I was an hypocrite. I did this morning for his death complain, and yet do not mourn, because he lives ere night. When I his death believed, compassion wrought, 
and was the stickler twixt my heart and him. But now that curtain's drawn from off my thought, hate doth appear again with visage grim and paints the face of Herod in my heart in horrid colors with detested look. Then fear would come, but scorn doth play her part and say that scorn with fear can never brook. I know I could enchain him with a smile and lead him captive with a gentle word. I scorn my look should ever man beguile or ever speech than meaning to afford. Else Salome in vain might spend her wind, in vain might Herod's mother wet her tongue. In vain had they complotted and combined, for I could overthrow them all ere long. Oh, what a shelter is mine innocence to shield me from the pangs of inward grief. Against all mishaps, it is my fair defense, and to my sorrows yields a large relief. To be commandress of the triple earth and sit in safety from a fall secure. To have all nations celebrate my birth, I would not that my spirit were impure. Let my distressed state pity unpitied be. Mine innocence is hope enough for me. And exit, Mariam. O oh, guiltless queen, oh, that my wish might place a little temper now about thy heart. Unbridled speech is Mariam's worst disgrace, and will endanger her without desert. I am in greater hazard. Oh, my head, the fatal axe doth hang unsteadily. My disobedience, once discovered, will shake it down. So he must so shall die. For when the king shall find, we thought his death had been as certain as we see his life. And marks withal, I slighted so his breath, as to preserve alive his matchless wife. Nay more, to give to Alexander's hand the regal dignity, the sovereign power, how I had yielded up at her command the strength of all the city, David's tower. What more than common death may I expect, since I too well do know his cruelty? To a death a word of Herod's to neglect, what then to do directly contrary? Yet life, I quit thee with a willing spirit, and think thou couldst not better be employed. I forfeit thee for her that more doth merit. Ten such were better dead than she destroyed. But fare thee well, chaste queen, well may I see the darkness palpable and rivers part, the sun stands still, nay more, retorted be. Never woman with so pure a heart, thine eyes grave majesty keeps all in awe and cuts the wings of every loose desire. Thy brow is table to the modest law, yet though we dare not love, we may admire. And if I die, it shall my soul content, my breath in Mariam's service shall be spent. It is not enough for one that is a wife to keep her spotless from an act of ill, but from suspicion she should free her life and bear herself power as well as will. It is not so glorious for her to be free as by her proper self-restraint to be. When she hath spacious ground to walk on, why on the ridge sh should she desire to go? It is no glory to for forbear alone those things that may her honour overthrow, but tis begworthy if she will not take all lawful liberties for honour's sake that wife her hand against her fame doth rear, that more to her lord alone will give a private word to any second ear. And though she may with reputation live, yet though most chaste, she doth her glory blot and wounds her honour though she kills it not. When to their husbands they themselves do bind, do they not wholly give themselves away? Or give they but their body, not their mind, reserving that though best for others pray? Oh, sure, their thoughts no more can be their own, and therefore should to none but one be known. Then she usurps upon another's right, that seeks to be by public language graced. And though her thoughts reflect with purest light, her mind, if not peculiar, is not chaste. For in a wife, it is no worse to find a common body than a common mind. And every mind, though free from the thought of ill, that seek out of glory seeks a worth to show. When any's ears are but one therewith they fill, when any's ears are but one therewith they fill, doth in a sort 
her pureness overthrow. Now Mariam had, but to this she bent, been free from fear as well as innocent. Thus speaks the chorus at the end of the act. Um, so we have some interesting uh, stuff going on here. So we have Sahimus, uh, we sort of the, the right hand uh, man, as it were, uh, in in Herod's absence, um, uh, telling Mariam uh, to uh, be nice to Herod. Maybe be nice to Herod when he gets back. Maybe be nice to him. Uh, Mariam's going, no, no, I said I absolutely, I'm not going to be reconciled with him ever. Uh, I, I'm, I've, I, I've, this is the hill I'm going to die on. And so he must tries to t t talk around and she exits and he goes, right, well, I'm screwed. Um, I'm going to go and die. That, that's, that seems like my only plan right now because, um, yeah, we weren't too sad about Herod probably being dead sort of burnt that bridge somewhat um so yeah how are we feeling about mariam's um absoluteness in this scene you know because in the in the beginning of the play she was you know i'm not sure where i'm feeling not sure where i'm at and now mariam has a very very level course it seems uh thoughts in the room uh, or other thoughts uh elizabeth uh, did i see you waving yeah i was just thinking like i wonder what everyone else is doing you know, so whereas Mary was talking and so him was were, were talking, I was like, oh, yes, yeah, very interesting. But I wonder what everybody else is doing. And I have this impression that they're all scrambling the same way Miriam and Sohimus are to like almost like redefine their position. They're all like running around to kind of like because because none of them have reacted to Herod's death the way they're supposed to have. So they are. I had a sense for this scramble for kind of like um, for safety. Mm, yeah, because we're following straight on from Salome and Ferraris finding out the news. And then we go straight to this scene where Marion finds the news. Whereas Marion just sort of go, you know, whereas the other two scrabble, as you're saying, they're scrabbling around, they're organising the court. Whereas Marion just sort of goes, no, I have made my decision. I am doing, this is what we're doing. And it's like, the, so he must, he must be bricking it really. I, I just think he's just going, you know, come on, let's let's have a plan. Let's have a plan. Cheer up Herod when he gets back. No. OK. Good plan. Good talk. Good talk. Good talk. Um, yeah, not good. Not good for Sahimus. Shame we've never met Sahimus before. I, I'd like to have met him earlier. Uh, thoughts? Other thoughts? Eric? I, I'm just perplexed by this sort of... Um... What's it called? Um, the chorus going, a common body is worse than a common mind. And, or, or, you know, you know, wife, it is no worse to find a common body than a common mind. And, like, you know, though free from thought of it. So basically, she's supposed to keep herself chased for Herod. Is that the idea? Because, mm -hmm. like, it's terrifying. I mean, he's killed people and stuff. Having said that, he's a monarch and he's her husband. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, what you, we do have, uh, you know, a man in this scene uh, basically telling a woman to acquiesce to a man, uh, man's desires upon his return. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's uh, admittedly Sahimus is doing this because he thinks he's going to die if he doesn't persuade her to do it. But it is also a bit, you know, uh, coercive. Rapey. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot going on there. Um, and yeah, the chorus's position on much of the action is is really interesting. Uh, as to where it actually is placed. Uh, Rachel. No, uh, this is just a thing that I think a production could choose to do, like, because this scene, I think, informs a little bit of that first scene that we met Mariam in where she's crying and how genuine that emotion was, you know, because we do have that, uh, I forget his name, the other guy who talks to Herod's sibling, Salome, and his brother, and he's like, oh, I didn't perceive you were crying, good for you for bearing it so well type thing. And, um, you know, some of Miriam's conversations with Salome, you know, it seems like she pretends a lot to be a better person um, than she is and uses that to her advantage. Um, but I think if a production wanted, because the way the chorus goes on about her, the chorus in this part doesn't mention Herod's name. It refers to like husbands um, in, in the plurality. 
that if while he was gone, you know, even before he's buried, if she's gotten remarried to somebody else, or if you wanted to put So Amos in that position of being the guy that she's married, you could create this uh, this standoff of why she's not going back into bed with Herod. Uh, yeah, I mean, you 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 could. I don't think the text is saying that, but you could make. Yeah, you could make that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's. I I don't I. That's what I'm saying. It's not in the text, but I think there's ambiguity enough that if a production wanted, they could play it if they just wanted to, I don't know, play with something. Mm. Uh, other thoughts? Because, um, yeah, the, the, the chorus's position here, you know, is is um, not great. Not great. I'm not with the chorus a lot of the time, I have to say. Uh, Eric? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's like, I mean, okay. Okay, the previous ones were kind of telling us, you know, a bit of plot, like, oh no, what happens if Herod is alive? Oh no, oh no. And then, you know, after the news has been broken, now it's kind of like, well, this is how we reestablish equilibrium slash the status quo. And there's a part of me going, well, Mariam already swore not to do this. Therefore, it is she's kind of in a position of power, but like empowerment rather than power um for herself but then she knows what is <laughs> what is going to happen to her i think by this point even if like i mean it, we haven't even met herod but we already know so much about him yeah yeah we have not met herod but that moment has now come as we go to act four and herod is in the building uh so um enter herod and his attendants and for this scene uh, i will be herod so um, who's reading none to you? Just checking. Uh, that's Eric, isn't it? Um, yes, so, uh, Alan, could you briefly read uh, the next stage direction coming up? And actually, no, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, uh, Elizabeth, could you read the stage directions coming up uh, for the next while until you actually enter? later on and then we'll figure out how we're working that uh, as it were we're a bit short on readers there aren't that many stage directions it's not that complicated but hey you know let's 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 stick with the system we've got in place okay we're going into act four scene one enter herod and his attendants hail happy city happy in thy store and happy that thy building such we see more happy in the temple where we adore but most of all that mariam lives in thee Enter Nuntio. Art thou returned? How fares my Mariam? She's well, my lord, and will anon be here as you commanded. Muffle up thy brow, thy thou die, day's dark taper. Mariam will appear, and where she shines we need not thy dim light. Oh, haste thy steps, rare creature, speed thy pace, and let thy presence make the day more bright, and cheer the heart of Herod with thy face. Oh, it is an age since I from Mariam went. Methinks our parting was in David's days. The hours are so increased by discontent, deep sorrow, Joshua like the season stays. But when I am with Mariam, time runs on. Her sight can make months, minutes, days of weeks. And hour is then no sooner come than gone, when in her face mine eye for wonders seeks. You world-commanding city, Europe's grace, twice hath my curious eye your streets surveyed. I have seen the statue-filled place that once, if not for geese, had been betrayed. I, all your Roman beauties, have beheld and seen the shows your ediles did prepare. I saw the sum of what in your exiled yet saw no miracle like Mariam rare. The fair and famous Livia, Caesar's love, the world's commanding mistress did I see, whose beauties both the world and Rome approve. Yet, Mariam, Livia is not like to thee. Be patient but a little while, mine eyes, within your compass limits be contained, that object straight shall your desires suffice, from which you were so long a while restrained. How wisely, Mariam, doth the time delay, lest sudden joy my sense should suffocate. I am prepared. Thou needst no longer stay. Enter Ferroris. Who's there? 
my Marion, more than the happy fate? Oh, no. It is for Aurorus. Welcome, brother. Now for a while I must my passion smother. All health and safety wait upon my lord, and may you long in prosperous fortunes live, with Rome commanding Caesar at accord, and have all honours the world can give. Oh, brother, now thou speak'st not from thy heart. No, thou hast struck a blow at Herod's love, that cannot quickly from my memory part, though Salome did me to pardon move. Valiant Vesalius, now to thee farewell, thou wert my kind and honourable brother. Oh, hapless hour, when you self-stricken fell, thy, thou father's image, glory of thy mother. Had I desired a greater suit of thee than to withhold thee from a harlot's bed, thou wouldst have granted it, but now I see all are not like that in a womb are bred. Thou wouldst not, hadst thou heard of Herod's death, have made his burial time thy bridal hour. Thou wouldst with clamours, not with joyful breath, have showed the news to be not sweet, but sour. A cellar's great worth I know did stain for Aurus petty valour. But they lie, excepting you yourself, that dare maintain that he did honour Herod more than I. For what I showed, love's power constrained me show, and parting loving faults for Mariam's sake. Mariam, where is she? Nay, I do not know. But absent use of her fair name I make. You have forgiven greater faults than this. The Constabarus that against your will preserved the sons of Babas lives in bliss, though you commanded him the youths to kill. Go, take a present order for his death, and let those <coughs> traitors feel the worst of fears. Now Salome will whine to beg his breath, but I'll be deaf to prayers and blind to tears. He is, my lord, from Salome divorced, although her affection did to leave him grieve. Yet was she, by her love to you, enforced to leave the man that would your foes relieve. Then haste them to their death. Exit for Yes, no, indeed, exit. Uh, for Aurus. Um, I think we'll just pause there just to take in a bit of the, the atmosphere of this court. Uh, Herod's um, busy chap. Um, <laughs> thoughts of the room. Uh, everything that Salome and Ferorus planned earlier has just been enacted. Uh, Rachel then Eric. No, no, no for Rachel. No, Eric. Um, yeah, I... When when he talks about smothering his passion, I can almost like picture him in sort of a Hugh Hefner style thing. <laughs> like that's <laughs> kind of how I pictured him, which is not the image you want for a commander, but just kind of I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean he's he's really keen on seeing Mariam. Yeah. He's he's really yeah. you know and uh, obsessively, and it's like uh, all state business, death, 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 death. Um, oh oh, is that Mariam? Oh no, it's somebody else. Um, oh, it's you brother <laughs> you know who is clearly not impressed with i heard you got married when i was dead uh he's, you know he's got a point i think he's got a reason to be a bit miffed um though uh, yeah almost no thought about the death of constabarus there you know there's no debate discussion oh he kept the sons of babas oh death uh eric yeah, I think it's kind of like basically Ferraris knows that information um, sort of and uses it to sort of, look, here is, there's someone who's done worse than I have. <laughs> like mm. sort of um, throwing him under the bus, so to speak, or under. Yeah. And, and, yeah. Um, to, yeah. To sort of save himself, <laughs> which is telling. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it, it had been pre-planned by, um, by Salome, but you're absolutely right. He uses it to deflect Herod's bad mood because Herod is uh, clearly uh, not a happy bunny. But also just um, you can distract Herod from his train of thought by just saying Mariam. You just say the word Mariam and he's just... I've, I've known dogs with similar reactions, you know, just, uh, you know, and treat. Uh, I, I think that might be a reductive description of Herod. Anyway, uh, Elizabeth. 
I think Herod brings a very different character to the mix here. I think he changes he changes the tone of the play immensely. He's a kind of smarmy, slimy. He's very uh, disconcerting character. And when he says, "Then haste them to their death," does he include Salome in that? No. no okay. No, she's not no, part no. of. She's um, not part. Of. No, Just it, baby's sons and and um, uh, layers uh, and Constabarus. 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 Yeah, and it's it, because he immediately afterwards says, you know, oh, Salome is going to come and beg for me not to kill him because um, <laughs> he's her husband and everything. But you know, I'm 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 not going to listen. Not going to listen. Um, which of course we know. Is a, the, and this is where the irony element here comes in. You know, you can almost imagine there's a few nice laugh lines potentially in here, even though, though this is really dark. Someone's just been sentenced to death. Uh, Rachel. Yeah, I mean, um, that's what I, what Elizabeth just asked was what I was going to ask before, but I like scrolled down to see if her name was still in the script. Uh, but I, um, I think if you were putting this on, uh, um, an audience would have a moment of, oh, is he going to kill his own sister too and include her in this? And maybe that wouldn't be resolved until later on. And that could be a point of like surprise or tension for the audience, her reappearance or um, non reappearance. Because I mean, we've kind of got the same thing with Herod, where it's been telling us he's dead, he's dead, he's dead, and then he just shows up again. So maybe, yeah, maybe it's, it's it's some sort of parallel like that yet to be seen. Well, we do have the potential with Herod that he could just kill anyone at a drop of a hat. You know, he's clearly quite mercurial in that sense. He'm just, and death. Um, uh, Eric. Yeah, I was going to say that, like, this is Act 4, Scene 1, but well, at least, you know, based on our own, um, on this script. Yes, there are additional breaking up of this scene into additional units, ignore them. Yeah, and it just, it's quite late in the play to introduce, I mean, it's been structurally really good in terms of like suspense, like, oh my god, is he, is he alive, is he dead, is he alive, is he dead? But then I'm thinking that he's kind of like, like um, he's like a reverse deus ex machina, <laughs> where like, if he doesn't turn up, things are just going to be okay. But then um, if he does, because he does turn up, things like the plot moves forward. Yeah, the, I mean, the yeah, the first half of the play is defined by his absence uh, and the sort of stasis. Everyone's plotting in the first half, but nobody can do anything until they, they, they sort of know where they are. And then when he actually turns up, stuff happens very, very quickly. Um, you know, Herod makes things happen. Uh, not always good things. Um, other thoughts? Um Okay, we'll move forward. Um, depending on which edition you're looking at, you know, we've, we're towards the end of Act 4, Scene 2, and about to go into Act 4, Scene 3. But yeah, these these are meaningless divisions. Um, anyway, uh, we've just had the exit of... Um... Gross. Yes, we have. And it's me again. I will requite the gentle Mariam. Uh, Salem, I mean. The thought of Mariam d doth so steal my spirit, my mouth from speech of her, I cannot wean. <laughs> Enter Mariam. And here she comes indeed, happily met, my best and dearest half. Ha what ails, my dear? Thou dost the difference certainly forget, twixt dusky habits and a time so clear. My lord, I suit my garment to my mind, and there no cheerful colours can I find. Is this my welcome? Have I longed so much to see my dearest Mariam discontent? What is th that is the cause thy heart to touch? Oh, speak that thy thy sorrow may prevent. Art thou not Jury's queen and Herod's too? Be my commandress, be my sovereign guide. To, to be by thee directed, I will woo. For in thy pleasure lies my highest pride. Or if thou think Judea's narrow bound to strict a limit for thy great command, thou shalt be empress of Arabia crowned. For thou shalt rule, and I will win the land. I'll rob the holy David's sepulchre to give thee wealth, if thou for wealth do care. 
thou shalt have all they did with him inter, and I for thee will make the temple bear. I neither have pa of power nor riches want. I have enough, nor do I wish for more. Your offers to my heart no ease can grant, except they could my brother's life restore. No. Had you wished the wretched Miriam glad, or had your love to her been truly tied, nay, had you not desired to make her sad, my brother nor my grandsire had not died. Wilt thou believe no oaths to clear thy lord? How oft have I with execration sworn thou art by me beloved, by me adored, yet are my protestations heard with scorn. Hercanus plotted to deprive my head of this long-settled honour that I wear, and therefore I did justly doom him dead, to rid the realm from peril, me from fear. Yet I, for Mariam's sake, do so repent the death of one whose blood she did inherit. I wish I had a kingdom's treasure spent, so I had ne'er expelled Hercanus' spirit, as I affected that same noble youth in lasting infamy my name in roll if i not mourned his death with hearty truth did i not show to him my earnest love when when i to him the priesthood did restore and did for him a living priest remove which never had been done but once before i know that moved by importunity you made him priest and shortly after die. I will not speak, unless to be believed. This froward humour will not do you good. It hath too much already, Herod, grieved to think that you on terms of hate have stood. Yet smile, my dearest Mariam, do but smile, and I will all unkind conceits exile. I cannot frame disguise, nor never taught my face a look dissenting from my thought. By heaven you vex me, build not on my love. I will not build on so unstable ground. Nought is so fixed, but peevishness may move. Tis better slightest cause than none were found. Be judge yourself if ever Herod sought or would be moved a cause to ch of change to find. Yet let your look declare a milder thought. My heart again you shall to marry and bind. How oft did I for you, my mother child, uh, chide, revile my sister and my brother rate, and tell them all my Mariam they belied. Distrust me still, if these be signs of hate. Enter Butler. What hast thou hit here? A drink procuring love. The queen desired me to deliver it. Did I? Some hateful practice this will prove. Yet can it be no worse than heaven's permit? Confess the truth, thou wicked instrument, or to her outrageous will. Tis poison, sure. Tell true, and thou shalt escape the punishment, which if thou do conceal, thou shalt endure. I know not, but I doubt it be no less. Long since the hate of you her heart did seize. Knowest thou the cause thereof? My lord, I guess Sir Hemus told the tale that did displease. Oh, heaven! Sir Hemus, folks, go, let him die. Stay not to suffer him to speak a word. Exit Butler. Oh, damned villain, did he falsify the oath he swore, e'en of his own accord. Now do I know thy falsehood, painted devil, thou white enchantress. Oh, thou art so foul that hyssop cannot cleanse thee worst of evil. A beauteous body hides a loathsome soul. Your love, so hemus, moved by his affection, though he hath ever heretofore been true, did blab forsooth that I did give, uh, I did give direction if we were put to death to slaughter you. And you in black revenge attended now to add a murder to your breach of vow. It's a dream. <laughs> oh, heaven, that were no more. I'll give my realm to who can prove it so. 
I would I were like any beggar poor, so I for false my Mariam did not know. Foul pith contained in the fairest rind that ever graded a cedar. Oh, thine eye is pure as heaven, but impure thy mind, and for impurity shall Mariam die. Why didst thou love Sohemus? They can tell that say I loved him. Mariam says not so. Oh, cannot impudence the coals expel that for thy love in Herod's bosom glow? It is as plain as water, and denial makes of thy falsehood but a greater trial. Hast thou beheld thyself, and couldst thou stain so rare perfection? Even for love of thee I do profoundly hate thee. Wert thou plain, thou shouldst all the wonder of Judea be. But, oh, thou art not. Hell itself lies hid beneath thy heavenly show. Yet never wert thou chaste. Thou mightst exult, pull down, command, forbid, and be above the wheel of fortune placed. Hadst thou complotted Herod's massacre, that so thy son a monarch might be styled, not half so grievous were an action, such an action were, as once to think that Mariam is defiled. Bright workmanship of nature sullied o'er, with pitched darkness now thine eye end shall be. Thou shalt not live, fair fiend to cousin more, with heavenly semblance as thou cousinest me. Yet must I love thee, in despite of death, if thou shalt die in despite of love. For neither shall my love prolong thy death, nor shall thy loss of breath my love remove. I might have seen thy falsehood in thy face. Where couldst thou get thy stars that servest for eyes, except by theft, and theft is foul disgrace? This had appeared before were Herod wise, but I am a sot, a very sot, no better. My wisdom long ago a wandering fell thy face, encounter it, my wit did fetter, and made me for delight my freedom sell. Give me my heart, false creature, tis a wrong, my guiltless heart should now with thine be slain. Thou hadst no right to lock it up so long, and with usurper's name I marry him stain. Enter Butler. Have you designed Sir Hemus to his end? I have, my lord. Then call our royal guard. To do as much for Mariam. Exit Butler. They offend. Leave ill blamed or good rib without reward. Enter soldiers. Here. Take her to her death. Oh, no, no. Come back, come back. What meant I to deprive the world of light, to muffle jury in the foulest black that ever was an opposite to white? Why, whither would you carry her? You bade we should conduct her to her death, my lord. Why, sure I did not. Well, Herod was not mad. Why should she feel the fury of the sword? <laughs> oh, now the grief returns unto my heart, and pulls me piecemeal, love and hate do fight, and now hath love acquired the greater part, yet now hath hate affection conquered quite. And therefore bear her hence, and Hebrew, why sees you the lion's paws, the fairest lamb of all the flock? She must not, shall not die. Without her, more than most, uh, uh, no, without her I am, I most miserable am, and with her more than most. Away, away, uh, but bear her to, but to prison, not to death. And is she God indeed? Stay, stay, villain, stay. Her looks alone preserved your sovereign's breath. Well, let her go. But yet she shall not die. I cannot think she meant to poison me, but certain tis she lived too wantonly, and therefore shall she never more be free. Exit Herod, soldier. Foul villain, can thy pitchy coloured soul permit thine ear to hear her causeless doom, and not enforce thy tongue that tale control, that must unjustly bring her to her tomb? 
O oh, Salome, thou hast thyself repaid for all the benefits that thou hast done. Thou art the cause I have the queen betrayed. Thou hast my heart to darkest falsehood won. I am condemned. Heaven gave me not my tongue to slander innocence, to lie, deceive, to be the hateful instrument to wrong. The earth of greatest glory to bereave. My sin ascends and doth to heaven cry. It is the blackest deed that ever was. And there doth sit an angel notary that doth record it down in leaves of brass. Oh, how my heart doth quake. Achitopel, thou found a means thyself from shame to free, and sure my soul approves thou didst not well. All follow some, and I will follow thee. And exit Butler at the end of the very long first scene, split up into five scenes in the uh, the, the the text. But uh, it's one scene. It's one scene, people. So Herod, he's a stable bloke. <coughs> um... He's 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 really got it together, hasn't he? He's 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 really with it. Um, and yeah, we have this poison thing. We have this poison plot. Uh, did we did we did we hear about a planned poison plot earlier? I I don't recall that being set up. I don't, I I have no memory of that. So um, it really comes out of the blue. Someone comes. Here's a here's not poison. It's it's, it's like Butler has to walk on as guiltily as possible, going. Uh, well, I don't know it's poison, but you know, I, the 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 man wearing the hazmat suit when he handed me the 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 the, the cup didn't look suspicious at all. <laughs> so, yeah, Alan. I mean, I got very very confused. Um, I mean, the number of screeching U turns. The guy could have a career in modern politics, um, but I mean. Going right back to the beginning of that sequence we just did, mm. um, there's, there was the, almost, I think, the first line in there um, had me confused. I'm just uh, scrolling through. What yeah. You, with the, the weird Freudian slip. I will requite the gentle Maria. Mm. Salam, I mean. I was thinking, what the f is going on here? Um, and there was also the thought that came to me about... Um, when the butler first enters, or butler first enters, the queen desired me to deliver it. Is he referring to Mariam, or is he do, referring to Doris? He's, he's referring to Mariam, that's the plot. So it's going, she told me to, uh, even though, of course, it's it's a lie. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, the, the, the thing about the gentle Mariam, Salam, <laughs> I mean, is, is, is that just Herod is, has this obsessive one-track mind, I think. It's just you know he he's supposed to be talking about Salome at this instant and and, and he um he just always keeps every all roads lead to Mariam. Um The guy's got issues. Uh, Eric then Rachel. The, there was a bit that reminded me of the play we're doing in the evenings, or uh, which is sort of Queens of Arcadia, where you know the someone who's like sort of is basically well, you know, kind of believes whatever he's told, which is quite, like, sort of... You wouldn't expect that of Herod. Like, you'd expect him to conduct the full sort of elaborate, I don't know, um, in, not injunction, what's the word? Investigation <laughs> or something. But he, he doesn't question that this sort of behaviour is what, like, um, what Marion would do. Hmm. Yeah, and there's something very sort of uh I, I think someone put in the chat a sort of s and m quality to uh, what's going on with herod and mariam at the beginning of that scene of just him he's 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 prostrating you know sm and it's all that stuff and we just go do but smile smile dear you know it's just smart and it's just going oh that's not creepy at all that's not mm. that's not really controlling uh, uh, at all you know you get the impression what what kind of trophy wife herod wants uh, and I'm not suggesting that this, suggesting that this has had any recent modern, uh, modern parallels at all. Um, Rachel. Uh, yeah, I mean, in that long speech that he talks about when she brings up her uh, grandfather and her brother, he never once apologizes. He just makes it all about him. And then mm. also um, to what Alan just said, uh, I don't know if this is just our copy uh the script that we're going from but in the character list auntie potter is uh it says it's herod's son by salome mm. 
So um, uh, maybe not so much a Freudian, maybe not that a, a, that far cry of a Freudian slip. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, also just uh, absolutely terrifying. This scene's absolutely terrifying. Just every word out of his mouth. And I feel like there, some of this is genuine and some of it's false. Uh, and, that, and that he plays with it that way because he does, he does seem a very sadistic person uh, in that he just sentences people's, people to death. But I think perhaps he's one of those people that might like to um, torture them with words too or torture them with the hope of escaping him or escaping their sentence of death. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, and actually the, another parallel with the uh, 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 Queen's Arcadia that um, the moment he's rejected, um the the guy goes off on one about how how uh, awful uh women are and uh, and 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 how this person is and there's there's lots of loaded uh uh language being used in various ways to do with uh um following on from some of the the, the racial politics that we were having last time that we've got an awful lot of white and blackness being uh being put in play um, and the, the the idea that Mariam appears fair and very uh, very white, uh, but he's black uh, underneath, and, and and the way that lands is a bit problematic for us. Um, but it's coming from a guy who's an utter bastard, so uh, maybe that's that that sort of lets most of that out. Uh, apart from uh, it, it sort of creeps into other things, and then we have this stuff with the soldier of going leave, come back, leave, come back, leave, come back. I mean, it's. Hera just looks like a nightmare of a part, actually, having now just read it. Just going, keeping all of those changes of direction and keeping them clear and making them read and be vaguely truthful um, and getting the intention in there and yet keeping the pace up. That's a, that's a hard thing to do because I was struggling sight reading to keep going in the right direction because I'd be, I'd be still on the wrong one. <laughs> I'd be going, ah, I, I like her. No, I don't. Yes, I do. No, I don't. And I'd get very lost. Uh, Eric, then Rachel. Yeah, but I think in, in a production, like especially if it's a stage production, not Zoom, then you could kind of, like, you know, he would wait till they get to the door and then realize, oh, shit. <laughs> this is, this is no, this is not what I want. But then, like, sort of, you know, and then th there, there would be time between those sentences mm. rather than sort of what we're reading here. Yeah. Um, what I didn't expect was the butler going sort of, oh, Salome, I love you, therefore I'm going to kill Mariam, which is kind of, we, we never had that set up anywhere. Is that quite what butler said? Um... He says, oh, oh, Salome, thou thy, hast thyself repaid for all the benefits thou hast done. Thou art the cause I have the queen betrayed. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I think that's just um, Salome commissioned commissioned Butler to do that. Um, I, I, yeah, that could be. <laughs> you know, he's going. You know, if, if Butler feels culpable, he's feeling a bit of guilt, um, uh, a little bit. Uh, Rachel, then Alan. Um, um, to Eric's thing, I mean, maybe it, it's left with that ambiguity, so the audience doesn't know. You know what I mean? Like they don't know if it's paid in in money or if it's paid in. Um, you know, sexual favors or some, you know, promotion or something like that to do it like that. Um, but my my thing with the Herods, I think this is a scene that in like a production, like a full production, you would go over a, a more than a few times. Like, um, uh, I, I think it would be rehearsed a little more because I think with his changes of direction, you have so many people shifting and moving and it would be there'd be like, it, it would be half internal and then half external. And um, how Eric said about the waiting till they get to a certain thing, you know, you could play it with the, oh no, don't, don't do it and have it be like legitimate or you could have him watching and waiting in silence and composure and then saying at the last minute to come back, knowing they have to come back to him because he's the king and just playing this yo-yo game. Cause it could be extremely fun, I think for, someone playing Herod, I mean, if they're playing it in the, the weird, uh, controlling, really, really creepy way, he knows exactly what he's doing, even if he's outwardly projecting all this emotion. Mm. Uh, Alan? 
I must admit, I was confused because up until that final speech, the butler had been functioning really as a sort of almost a mechanic, as a mechanical, you know, delivering the, the booze and acting as a messenger. And then suddenly we get this quite chunky speech. Um, and I must admit, partway through it, I was starting to wonder whether that was actually a misattribution, that it should be one of the more major characters. Not that there are many of them who haven't yet been condemned to death. Mm. Um, yeah, um, I, 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 there, there is a reason that may become apparent. Uh, but right. I do like that question about actually, yes, could we come? Because we do get an awful lot of pop-up characters who mm. pop up and say, uh, get a speech, and then you never see them again. So, yeah, it, w it would almost be quite nice if, if we've got someone who we have a, a, a longer state of play with. You know, I don't see it being Ananel, though, being... You know, because mm. that's the only person I can think of off the top of my head who's free. Unless we make it the handmaid who uh, married Ferorus. Because, um, you know, uh, maybe still waiting tables while waiting for the uh, the marriage certificate to come through. Um, that might be a stretch too far. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, let's go to Act 4, Scene 2, as we're calling it. Um, some people call it Act 4, Scene 6. We've only had one scene. That would just be silly. So, Act 4, Scene 2, Constabarus and uh, Babus's sons and their guard. Now, here we step our last, the way to death. We must not tread this way a second time, yet let us resolutely yield our breath. Death is the only ladder heaven to climb. With willing mind I could myself resign, but yet it grieves me with a grief untold. Our death should be accompanied with thine. Our friendship we to thee have dearly sold. Still wilt thou wrong the sacred name of friend? Then shouldst thou never style it friendship more. But base mechanic traffic that doth lend, yet will be sure they shall the debt restore. I could with needless compliment return. Tis for thy ceremony, I could say. Tis I that made the fire your house to burn. For but for me, she would not you betray. Had not the damned woman sought mine end, you had not been the subject of her hate. You never did her hateful mind offend, nor could your deaths have freed her nuptial fate. Therefore, fair friends, though you were still unborn, some other subtlety devised should be, whereby my life, though guiltless, should be torn. Thus have I proved Tis you that die for me. And therefore, should I weakly now lament, you have but done your duties. Friends should die, alone their friends' disasters to prevent, though not compelled by strong necessity. But now, farewell, fair city, nevermore shall I behold your beauty shining bright. Farewell of Jewish men the worthy store, no farewell to any female white, you wavering crew. My curse to you I leave. You had but one to give you any grace, and you yourselves will Mariam's life bereave. Your commonwealth doth innocency chase. You creatures made to be the human curse. You tigers, lionesses, hungry bears, tear-massacring hyenas, Nay, far worse, for they, do, for prey, do shed their feigned tears. But you will weep, you creatures cross to good. Your unquenched thirst of human blood. You were the angels cast from heaven for pride, and still do keep your angels' outward show. But none of you are inly beautified, but still your heaven-depriving pride doth grow. Did not the sins of man require a scourge? Your place on earth had been by this withstood. But since a flood no more the world must purge, you stayed in office of a second flood. You giddy creatures, sowers of debate, your love today and for no other cause, but for you yesterday you did deeply hate. You are the wreck of order, breach of laws. Your best are foolish, Proud, wanton, vain, your worst, adulterous, murderous, cunning, 
proud Salome attends the lighter train, or rather she, their leader, is allowed. I do the sottishness of men bail that do with following you enhance your pride. Twere better the human race should fail than be by such a mischief multiplied. Sham servile curse to all your sex was given because in paradise you did offend. When do we not resist the will of heaven when on your wills like servants we attend? You are to nothing constant but to ill. You are with naught but wickedness endued. Your loves are set on nothing but your will. And thus my censure of you, I, censure I of you conclude. You are the least of goods, the worst of evils. Your best are worse than men. Your worst than devils. Come, let us to our death. Are we not blessed? Our death will freedom from these creatures give, those trouble-quiet sowers of unrest. And this I vow, that had I leave to live, I would forever lead a single life and never venture on a devilish wife. <laughs> and they exit to die. And frankly, after that speech, Constabarus, um, <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Constabarus, yeah, he he sort of loses the audience there at the end. Um, you know, we, we just sort of um, we given them a bit of the benefit, of the doubt of going. Well, he's very old fashioned. Yes, he's he's coming from this position. Um, but yeah, he just just goes for it, doesn't he? Um, yeah. He's very good... enjoyable to read and very well written, I felt. felt. Invective always is. Again, mm. just going back to the other night, uh, the Queen's Arcadia, we had a very, very similar speech um, in that, which was, yeah, again, very, you know, very well structured, well put together. But yeah, he, go he, he does go on for a bit as mm. well. It's not just that he, he goes off on one on a tangent that's, you know, a bit awkward. Um, but yeah. He, he goes on for a very long time. <laughs> Salome's done a number on him. Um, but I think, to be fair, the number was already in there. Um, Alan? At, at least he's internally consistent with what he's saying, which is a damn sight more than Herod was. Well, yeah. No, I, th yeah, I think Herod, Herod has a certain kind of consistency. It's, it's just an inconsistency is his consistency. Other thoughts? Who wants to leap in on uh, Constabarus? I, I, I love, but, uh, yeah, okay, uh, Rachel, then Eric. I think the difference between, uh, you know, some of these characters and some of these other characters uh, is that I, I think there's a lot of duplicitous personalities in this court and Constabarus, I mean, uh, he's told us everything he's thought. Uh, and he's he says it and i think that he's you know this is if, if salome was with this guy for a while and this is what he's been saying all along i mean i i understand that they've broken up and it, it, she sentenced him to death but he had some of this before <laughs> he had some of this before you know so like there, there, he could he's not somebody who pretends to not be a sexist so yeah. uh 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 I mean, he just doesn't fit in with this court that you 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 pretend to be one thing and be another. Yeah, uh, Eric, and then we'll move on because I think we're, we're yeah. We're I was gonna say it would have been hilarious if so, like Babas's second son just gets off like sort of uh, like so in terms of you know not being sentenced to death after saying I will never have a wife and it's like oh okay good well that's it. Um, yeah, it, it it's just interesting, sort of this whole descent into. Since I'm gonna go die, I might as well say something. I know this. Also, they've been living in a basement for twelve years. They don't know better. Yeah, <laughs> the way the se uh, second son sort of goes. Um, aren't we blessed? Because you know, then we'll be free from women. Because uh, we'll be dead. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I mean, it's co cold comfort, guys. Cold comfort, uh, Elizabeth. I think some of the characters are losing it a bit towards the towards this part of the play because we've got baby's second son saying are we not blessed come let us to our death and then we've got herod who's not sure whether he wants to murder Miriam or sleep with her and i feel like 
there's a kind of almost disentangling or, or almost like a degrading of the characters as Herod's come in. He's kind of put this really, um, un, I feel like they're becoming unhinged mm. as Herod's come in. When he was when he was dead, everybody seemed to be quite logical and their thoughts seemed to be quite systematic. But now it seems to be falling apart a bit. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. The, 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 yeah. Herod arrives and suddenly all bets are off and people <laughs> are acting in very irrational ways. Everyone's acting very rationally in the first mm. half. Yeah. Um, whereas, yeah, not so much now. I like that. I really like that. That's that's really cool. Uh, okay, we're going to go on to Act 4, Scene 3, as I'm calling it, or Scene 7, if you're so inclined. <laughs> um, who wants to be Herod? Who wants to have a crack at Herod? Uh, I think we've got... It's just Helen, uh, Herod and Salome, I think, for most of this scene. Yep, yeah, it's just the two of them. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Um, I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't looking up, so I don't know who waved first. Um, yeah, give, give it to Rachel. She'll enjoy it way too much. <laughs> okay. Well, there was, there's another Herod opportunity to come later. So, uh, uh, um, actually, yeah, Eric, you take Herod now. Uh, Rachel, you can be Herod later. For reasons that will become clear. Um, okay. So, Act Four, Scene Three. Uh, enter Herod and Salome, brother to bro uh, to sister Chattage. Nay, hey, she shall die. Die, quoth you, that she shall, but for the means. The means, methinks it is hard to find a means to murder her withal. Therefore, I am resolved she shall be spared. Why? Let her be beheaded. That were well. Think you that swords are like miracles, like you? Her skin will every curtilax edge refell, and then your enterprise you well may rue. What if the fierce Arabian notice take of this your wretched weaponless estate they answer when we bid resistance make that mariam's skin did their fal falcons rebate beware of this you make a goodly hand if you of weapons do deprive our land why drown her then indeed a sweet device why would not every river turn her course rather than to rather than do her beauty prejudice and be reverted to the proper source. So not a drop of water should be found in all Judea's quotidian ground. Then let the fire devour her. It will not be. Flame is from her derived into my heart. Thou nursest flame. Flame will not murder thee. My dearest, my fairest, Mariam, fullest of desert. <sighs> then let her live for me. Nay, she shall die, but can you live without her? Doubt you that? I'm sure I cannot. I beseech you try. I have experience, but I know not what. How should I try? Why, let my love be slain. But if we cannot live without her sight, you'll find the means to make her breathe again. Or else you will bereave my comfort quite. Oh, I, I warrant you. And Salome exits. What? Is she gone and gone to bid the world be overthrown? What is her, her heart's composure, hard as stone? To what a cruel pass or cruel, cruel women grown? And Salome re-enters. She's returned already. Have you done? Is it possible you can command so soon a creature's heart to quench the flaming sun or from the sky to wipe away the moon? If Miriam be the sun and moon, it is. For I already have commanded this. But have you seen her cheek? A thousand times. But did you mark it too? I very well. What is it? A crimson bush. A crimson blush that ever limes the soul. No, no, it's who's... definitely bush. It's definitely oh, bush. Oh, bush. Cool. A crimson bush that ever limes the soul whose foresight doth not much excel. Send word she shall not die. Her cheek a bush. Nay, then, I, I see indeed you marked it not. Tis very fair, but yet will never blush. Though foul dishonours do her forehead blot. Then let her die, it is very true indeed, and for this fault alone sh shall Mariam bleed. What fault, my lord? What fault is it, you that ask? If you be ignorant, I know of none. To call her back from death shall be your task. I'm glad that she for innocent is known, for on the brow of Mariam hangs a fleece whose 
slenderest twine is strong enough to bind the hearts of kings, the pride and shame of Greece. Troy of flaming Helen's not so fairly shined. Tis true indeed. She lays them out for nets to catch the hearts that do not shun a bait. Tis time to speak, for Herod sure forgets that Miriam's very tresses hide deceit. Oh, do they so? Nay, then you do but well. In sooth, I thought it had been hair. Nets, you call them. Lord, how they do excel. I never saw a net that showed so fair. But have you heard her speak? You know I have. And were you not amazed? No, not a whit. Then twas not her you heard. Her life I'll save for Mariam hath a world amazing wit. She speaks a beauteous language, but within her heart is false as powder, and her tongue doth but allure the auditors to sin, and is the instrument to do you wrong. Maybe so, nay, tis so. She's unchaste, her mouth will ope to every stranger's ear, and then let the executioner make haste, lest she enchant him if her words he hear. Let him be deaf, lest she do him surprise, that shall to flee, free her spirit be assigned. Yet what boots deafness if he have his eyes? Her murderer must both be deaf and blind, for if he see, he needs must see the stars that shine of, on either side of Marion's face, whose sweet aspects will terminate the wars wherewith he should assault so precious chase. Her eyes can speak, and in their speaking move. Oft did my heart with reverence receive the world's mandates, pretty tales of love they utter, which can human bondage weave. But shall I let this heaven's model die, which for a small self-portraiture she drew? Her eyes like stars, her forehead like the sky. She is like heaven and must be heavenly true. Your thoughts do rave with doting on the queen. Her eyes are ebon hued, and you'll confess. A sable star hath been but seldom seen. Then speak of reason more, of Miriam less. Yourself are held a goodly creature here, yet so unlike my Miriam in your shape, that when to her you have approached near, myself hath often taken you for an ape. And yet you pray to beauty. Go your ways, you are to her a, a sunburnt blackamoor. Your paintings cannot equal Miriam's praise, your her nature is so rich, you are so poor. Let her be stayed from death, for if she die, we do not know what to stop her breath. The world cannot another marry him by. Why say you lingering? Countermand her death. Then you'll no more remember what hath passed. So Hemus's love and hers shall be forgot. Tis well in truth that fault may be her last. That fault may be her last, and she may mend. So yet she love you not. Oh God, tis true. So he must for earth and heaven. Why did you both conspire to make me curse it in cousining me with shows and proofs uneven? She showed the best, yet it proved the worst. Her show was such as had our singing king, the holy David, Maram's beauty seen, the Hittite then had felt no deadly sting, nor Beth Sabe had ever been a queen, or had his son the wisest man of men whose fond delight did most consistent change beheld her face, he had been stayed again. No creature having her can wish to range. Had Asura seen my Marim's brow, the humble Jew, she might have walked alone. Her beauteous virtue should have stayed below, whilst Mariam mounted to the Persian throne. But what avails it all? For in the way she is deceitful, light as vanity. Oh, she was made for nothing but a bait to train some hapless man to misery. I am the hapless man that have been trained to endless bondage. I will see her yet. Methinks I should discern her if she feigned. Can human eyes be dazzled by a woman's wit? Once more these eyes of mine with hers shall meet before the headsman do her life believe. Shall I forever part from thee, my sweet, without the taking of my latest leave? You had as good resolve to save her now. I'll stay her death. Tis well determined. For sure she never more will break her vow. So Hemus and Josephus both are dead. She shall not live, nor will I see her face, as long healed wound a second time doth bleed. With Joseph I remember her disgrace. A shameful end ensues a shameful deed. Oh, that I had not recalled to mind anew the discontent of Marion's wavering heart. Twas you, 
you foul mouth, that ain't none but you that did the thought thereof to me in part. Hence, from my sight, my black tormentor, hence, for that hadst not thou made Herod unsecure, I had not doubted Mariam's innocence, but still had held her in my heart pure. I'll leave you to your passion. Tis no time to purge me now, though of a guiltless crime. Exit Salome. Destruction take thee, thou hast made my heart as heavy as revenge. I am so dull, methinks I can't, I'm not sensible as smart, though hideous horrors at my bosom pull. My head weighs downwards, therefore will I go to try if I can sleep away my woe. Ding. And Herod um, goes. So we have a lovely familial scene, uh, <laughs> siblings together. Um, and yeah, Salome, just the constant list of, right, how should we murder her then? Uh, well, we've got all the options. Here, uh, you can go for beheading, drowning. Um, and yeah, it's it's like Salome just quietly walking Herod in to what, you know, shall we do the killing thing now? Shall we order, you know, you know, you've been sitting here not doing the thing. Would you like to do the thing now? It won't take me long. Shall I do the thing? I'll go and do the thing. Um, yeah, it's um, yeah, persuading Herod to actually go through with the murder. Um, yeah, Rachel. This scene really reminds me of uh, Les Liaisons Dangereux, where uh, it's the the uh, what do you call it? Like the one guy's a break, and um, the other is his ex lover, and she's an older woman. And he uh, is fixated on, um, like, if any, like, if anybody hasn't read it, like, he's fixated on this younger woman who's about to get married, and he really pursues her. She's just been married or something. Uh, but, like, it's an epistolary where he's writing back and forth with his ex, and she's like, if you really can get her to sleep with you, then um, I'll, I'll sleep with you again. And the... I feel like there is some flirting between Herod and Salome and she's denying this, you know, because he's not, he's not giving her what she wants, you know, which is Miriam to be executed um, in this. But I think there are little bits where maybe where there could be this, this back and forth. Um, uh, and I don't know, in this scene, just um, the way Salome is talking, if Auntie Potter is, Potter is really her um, son. Uh, uh, Antipater is Doris's son. Okay. Mm. Never mind then. Do Doris but the rest appear. of it, the rest of it, yeah. yeah. Except for um, what I was going to say next. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth. I think we've got some good old-fashioned early modern racism in this piece. Mm -hmm. Here, Herod said, "Myself hath often taken you for an ape. You are to her a sunburnt blackamoor." And then it made me wonder if Salome's colouring is the complexion is the same as Herod's because it's not the first time that he's made mention of her blackness or mm. her being un, as not as fair as Miriam. Mm. Yes, because Mar um, uh, Mariam uses it against um, Salome in the beginning of the play um, in, in Act One. Uh, and yeah, the, 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 and that's part of the thing about who's, who's more... It, Herod isn't quite Jewish enough from, mm. you know, from Mariam's position. Um, and, and so there's a constant thing. It's not just in mastic, but it's also racial and therefore racial barbs are part of the language that people are using against each other in this court. So absolutely. I mean, the characters are using race in that way. Mm. Um, the question, of course, for us is, you know, does, does, does is that the thesis of the play? Um, mm. Is, you know, is that the point the play is getting to, uh, put, putting forward or is the play just featuring characters and a world that is racist as opposed to uh, a, a play that's putting forward uh, that, that point of view? But maybe splitting hairs, uh, discuss. Uh, Elizabeth. Yeah, and just to, um, to echo what Rachel just said, I thought the sparring between Salome and Herod was fantastic. I thought Carrie wrote it really brilliantly because you could just see Salome is Salome is like bored and like tired of Herod. She has nothing. She doesn't want. She doesn't even want to go into this conversation. And he keeps drawing her in, and we are kind of captivated as an audience, kind of seeing where's this going to go because we know Herod's not going to kill Miriam. He said that many times, but he's angry with her. And he wants someone to vent to. And that seems to be the function Salome has in the scene. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah. Can she get can she get Herod over the line and get that <laughs> that that signature down on on the dot on the dotted line? <laughs> Uh, we need to continue, however, um, as um, effectively um, uh, you get to swap hat um, uh, to stop being Salome and become Doris. So you get to be another person who's not exactly on Mariam's side as we go to what we're calling Act 4, Scene 4. Um, others call it Act 4, Scene 8. Um, in fact, maybe even 9. I don't know. Yeah, no, Scene 8. Um, enter Mariam. And later on, Doris will appear, un but she's lingering unseen, perhaps. Am I the Merriam that presumed so much and deemed my face must needs preserve my breath? I, I, it was that thought my beauty such as it alone could countermand my death. Now death will teach me. He can pale as well a cheek of roses as a cheek less bright. And dim an eye whose shine doth most excel, as soon as one that casts a meaner light. Had not myself against myself conspired, no plot, no adversary from without could Herod's love from Merriam have retired, or from his heart have thrust my semblance out, the wanton queen that never loved for love, false Cleopatra, wholly set on gain with all her slights did prove, yet vainly prove, for her the love of Herod to obtain. Yet her allurements, all her courtly guile, her smiles, her favors, and her smooth deceit could not my face from Herod's mind exile, but were with him of less than little weight, that face in person that in Asia late for beauty's goddess, Paphos, queen was tain that face that did captivate great julius fate that very face that was antonius bane that face that to be egypt's pride was born that face that all the world esteemed so rare did herod hate despise neglect and scorn when with the same he Merriams did compare this made that I improvidently wrought, and on the wager even my life did pawn, because I thought, and yet but truly thought, that Herod's love could not from me be drawn. But now, though out of time, I plainly see it could be drawn, though never drawn from me, had I but with humility been graced, as well as fair I might have proved me wise, but I did think because I knew me chaste, one virtue for a woman might suffice, that mind for glory of our sex might stand, where humility and chastity doth march with equal paces hand in hand. But one, if single steen, who set it by, and I had singly one, but tis my joy, that I was ever innocent, though sour, and therefore can they but my life destroy. My soul is free from adversary's power. You princes great in power and high in birth. Be great and high, I envy not your hap. Your birth must be from dust, your power on earth. In heaven shall Miriam sit in Sarah's lap. I heaven, your beauty cannot bring you thither. Your soul is black and spotted, full of sin. You in adultery live nine years together, and heaven will never let adultery in. What are thou that dost poor Merriam pursue? Some spirit sent to drive me to despair? Who sees for truth that Merriam is untrue? If fair she be, she is as chaste as fair. I am that Doris that was once beloved, beloved by Herod. Herod's lawful wife, twas you that Doris from his side removed and robbed me from the and robbed from me the glory of my life. Was that adultery? Did not Moses say that he that being matched did deadly hate might by permission put his wife away and take a more beloved to be his mate? What did he hate me for? For simple truth? For bringing beauteous babes for love to him? For riches, noble birth, or tender youth? 
or for no stain did Doris honour dim. Oh, tell me, Miriam, tell me if you know, which fault of these made Herod Doris foe? These thrice ye three years have I with hands held up, and bowed knees fast nailed to the ground, besought for thee the dregs of that same cup, that cup of wrath that is for sinners found. And now thou art to drink it. Doris' curse upon thyself did all this while attend, but now it shall pursue thy children worse. Oh, Doris, now to thee, my knees, I bend. That heart that never bowed to thee doth bow. Curse not mine infant, let it be suffice, that heaven doth punish to me allow. Thy curse is cause that guiltless Miriam dies. Had I ten thousand tongues, and every tongue inflamed with poison's power, and steeped in gall, my curses would not answer for my wrong, though I in cursing them employed them all. Hear thou that didst Mount Gerizim command, to be a place whereon with cause to curse, stretch thy revenging arm, thrust forth thy hand, and plague the mother much, the children worse. Throw flaming fire upon the base-born heads that were begotten in unlawful beds, but let them live till they have sense to know what tis to be in a in miserable state, then be their nearest friend their overthrow, attended be they by suspicious hate. And, Miriam, I do hope this boy of mine shall one day come to be the death of thine. And exit Doris. Oh. Heaven forbid, I hope the world shall see, this curse of thine shall be returned on thee. Now, earth, farewell, though I be yet but young, yet I, methinks, have known thee too, too long. And exit Mariam, and I'll ask her, Alan, could you read the chorus to conclude the act? By human life is scorning to revenge an injury for who forgives without a further strife his adversary's heart to him doth tie and tis a firmer conquest truly said to win the heart than overthrow the head if we a worthy enemy do find to yield to worth it must be nobly done but if of baser metal be his mind in base revenge there is no honour won who would a worthy courage overthrow, and who would restless with worthless foe? We say our hearts are great and cannot yield. Because they cannot yield, it proves them poor. Great hearts are tasked beyond their power, but seld. The weakest lion will the loudest roar. Truth school for certain doth the same allow. High heartedness does sometimes teach to bow. A noble heart doth teach a virtuous scorn, to scorn to owe a duty over long, to scorn to be for benefits forborn, to scorn to lie, to scorn to do a wrong, to scorn to bear an injury in mind, to so scorn a freeborn heart, slave-like to bind. But if for wrongs we need revenge must have, then be our vengeance of the noblest kind. Do we his body from our fury save, and let our hate prevail against our mind? What can against him a greater vengeance be, than make his foe more worthy far than he? Had Marian scorned to leave a due unpaid, she would to Herod then have paid her love, and not have been by sullen passion swayed, to fix her thoughts all injury above, his virtuous pride. Had Marian thus been proved, long famous life to her had been allowed. And thus ends Act 4. So Doris, visiting Marian, presumably in her cell, uh, goes just to go, uh, na 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 uh, <laughs> Basically. Um, yeah, and we get Marian's sort of last soliloquy um, before um, bad things happen. Any thoughts in the room before we dive into Act 5? Um, how did you find Mariam there? Mariam's final standing position. Well, yes, Rachel, you were Mariam. 
I'm talking about Mariam in the past tense, like she's she's already dead. <laughs> no, I I uh I I really do believe that there she's not as good as she says she is because I mean there's all this talk of uh you know the talk of marriage that we usually only get like I know this is a tragic comedy but there's so much talk of marriage and there's so many people um who are uh I, I mean Salome is on her second marriage going into her third Herod's in his second marriage but he also you know is still trying to get back with salome in certain parts he's not getting back with salome he's a herod is definitely not getting back with salome i, I know i know but that's i feel like that's because she's <laughs> saying no you know what i mean but like it's also the, his sister i i know but i'm saying like <laughs> I, I, I don't know i'm going off that anti-potter thing that came that was in the whatever uh, anyway the but I, I really do think that maybe there is some truth to so Amos thing, even if it wasn't like a consummated marriage, that um, there's a that there's maybe something there, and that I, I don't know. I just don't. I, I think you could interpret her and her character as being truly innocent, but I feel like she would really not fit in in this court of all the of of Doris and Salome and Herod himself if she was really as innocent as could be well the, well the logic i think is that she the reason why she dies is because she is truthful and honest and that she's being effectively being you know because everybody else is is so uh, venal that they've outmaneuvered her uh and every every way way i've that's probably the logic of what the, the playwright is going for but you know hey who knows maybe it's true maybe it's true maybe the the the, the 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 slander about Sahima so it was based on something rather than just there was Josephus as well. Oh well Josephus is the um is that's the grandfather, isn't it? Um So Sahima uh, and Josephus are slain. Yeah jo Josephus I think was Mariam's first husband. Yeah, I forget I I, I get confused about that that element of things. Was who was dating who? I thought that uh, so, yeah, that I thought he was Salome's first husband that she left for Oh maybe jo Earth. yeah, maybe it was, yeah. Yeah, Josephus was the first husband for Salome, yes. So, yes. Uh, Josephus Constabarus, then uh Silius, oh, yes. If he recovers. And so he must was He's the uh, uh, the right hand man to uh, to Herod. So he's basically been left in charge. So in oh, Herod's yeah. absence, it's it's Ahimus and Mariam are effectively the heads of state, and so when Herod comes back and he's he hears this rumor that you know Salome uh, that um, Sahimus and uh, Mariam have been getting it together, he uh, he goes off it goes uh, off the deep end. Um, but it's probably not true. And Sahimus is now dead, so you know. Mariam is probably not going to be living for much longer. And Doris is probably going to be dancing. Uh, <laughs> probably have little fireworks. Doris dancing. Yeah, Doris dancing. <laughs> um, okay, let's go into Act 5. Uh, we're going to run this all the way through to the end. Uh, uh, keep, keep the pace going because there's a lot of long speeches, people. Um, keep the energy up. Uh, we have Nuntio, who... Uh, Rachel, you get to be Herod this time. You're You're up for Herod. You 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 did you wanted a Herod later on, so um, that's the deal, and uh, um, yeah, let's see. see. There's there's an awful lot, and um, I'll say Elizabeth, can you do the chorus at the very end of the of the act? Okay. Uh, otherwise, we'll go on. Act five, scene one. There's only one scene. Enter Nuntio. When, sweetest friend, did it did I so far offend your heavenly self that you, my fault to quit, have made me now relater of your end? The, the end of beauty, chastity, and wit. Was none so hapless at the fatal place, but I, most wretched for the queen to choose? Tis certain that I have some ill-boding face that made me cult to take, tell this luckless news. And yet, no news to Herod, were it new to him, him unhappy to had not been at all. Yet do I long to come within his view that he may know his wife did guiltless fall. And here he comes. Your Miriam greets uh, you well. Enter Herod. What? Lives my Miriam? 
joy exceeding joy, she shall not die. Heaven doth your will repel. Oh, do not with thy words my life destroy. I prithee tell no dying tale. Thine eye without thy tongue doth tell but too, too much. Yet let thy tongue's addition make me die. Death welcomes, death welcome comes to him whose grief is such. I, I went, uh, I went amongst the curious gazing troop to see the last of her that was the best, to see if death had heart to make her stoop, to see the sun admiring phoenix nest. When there, there I came upon the way, I saw the stately Mariam not debased by fear. Her look did seem to keep the world in awe, yet mildly did her face this fortune bear. Thou dost usurp my right. My tongue was framed to be the instrument of Miriam's praise. Yet speak, she cannot be too often famed. All tongues suffice not her sweet name to raise. But as she came, she Alexander met, who did her death, sweet queen, no wit bewail. But as if nature did, she did quite forget, she did upon her daughter loudly rail. Why stopped you not her mouth? Where had she words to darken that, that heaven made so bright? Our sacred tongue no epitaph affords to call her other than the world's delight. She told her that her death was too, too good and that already she had lived too long. She said she shamed to have a part in blood of her that did the princely Herod wrong. Base pick tank devil, shame, twas all her glory, that she to noble Miriam was the mother, but never shall it live in any story her name, except except to infamy, I'll smother. What answer did her princely daughter make? Uh, she came unmoved. Uh, sorry, um, she made no answer, but she looked the while as if they're they're all. She scarce did notice take, but yet smiled, the beautiful, the scornful smile. Sweet creature, I that look to mine do call, full oft hath Herod been amazed withal. Go on. Uh, she, she came unmoved with pleasant grace, as if the triumph for arrival were in stately habit and with cheerful face, yet every eye was moist but Mariam's there. When justly opposite to me she came, she picked me out from all the crew. She beckoned to me, called me by my name, for she my birth, name, my birth and fortune knew. What? Did she name thee? Happy, happy man. Wilt thou not ever love that name the better? But what sweet tune did this fair dying swan afford thine ear? Tell all, omit no letter. Tell thou, my lord, said she. Me? Meant she me? It's true, the more my shame. I was her lord. Were I not mad, her lord I still should be. But now her name must be by me adored. Oh, say. What said she more? Each word she said shall be the food whereon my heart is fed. Tell thou, my lord, thou sawest me lose my breath. Oh, but I could that sentence now control. If guiltily eternal be my death. I hold her chaste even in my inmost soul. By three days hence, if wishes could revive, I know himself would oft make me alive. Three days. Three hours, three minutes, not so much, a minute in a thousand parts divided. My penitence for her death is such, as in the first I wished she had not died. But forward in thy tale. Uh, why, on she went, and after she some silent prayer had said, she, she died as if to die she were content, and thus to heaven she, and her heavenly soul is fled. But art thou sure there doth no life remain? Is't possible my Miriam should be dead? Is there no trick to make her breathe again? Her body is divided from her head. Why? Yet methinks there might be found by art strange ways of cure. Tis sure rare things are done by an inventive head. 
and willing heart. Let not my lord your fancies idly run. It is as possible it should be seen that we should make the holy Abraham, Abraham live, though he entombed 2,000 years had been, as breath again to slaughtered Mariam give. But now for more assaults, prepare your ears. There cannot be a further cause of moan. This accident shall shelter me from fears. What can I fear? Already Mariam's gone. Yet tell even what you will. As I came by from Mariam's death, I saw upon a tree a man that to his neck a cord did tie, which cord he designed his end to be. When me he once discerned, he downwards bowed, and thus with fearful voice he cried aloud, Go tell the king he trusted ere he tried. I am the cause that Mariam causeless died. Damnation take him. For it was the slave that said she meant with poison's deadly force to end my life that she, the crown, might have. Which tale did Miriam from herself divorce? Oh, pardon me, thou pure unspotted ghost. My punishment must needs sufficient be in missing that content I valued most, which was thy admirable face to see. I had but one inestimable gift, jewel, jewel. I had but one inestimable, inestimable jewel. Yet one I had no monarch had the like. And therefore may I curse myself as cruel. T'was broken by a blow myself did strike. I gazed thereon and never thought me blessed. But when, it on, but when on it my dazzled eye might rest, a precious mirror made by wondrous art. I prized it 10 times dearer than my crown and laid it up fast folded in my heart. Yet I in sudden collar cast it down and pashed it all to pieces. Twas no foe that robbed me of it, no Arabian host nor no Armenian guide hath used me so, but Herod's wretched self hath Herod crossed. She was my graceful moiety the accursed, to slay my better half and save my worst. But sure she is not dead. You did but jazz to put me in perplexity a while. For well indeed, if I could be so dressed, I see she is alive, methinks you smile. If sainted Abel yet deceased be, to certain Mariam is as dead as he. Why, then go call her to me, bid her now put on fair habit stately ornament, and let no frown or shadow her smoothest brow, and her doth Herod's place his whole content. She's come in state weeds to please your sense, if now she come attired in robe of heaven. Remember, you yourself did send her hence, and now to you she can no more be given. She's dead? Hell take her murderer, she was fair. Oh, what a hand she had, it was so white, it did the whiteness of the snow impart. I never more shall see so sweet a sight. Tis true, her hand was rare. Her hand? Her hands! She had not singly one of beauty rare, but such a pair as here where Herod stands. He dares the world to make, to both compare. The cursed Salome, hadst thou been still, my Miriam had been breathing by my side. Oh, never had I, had I had my will, sent forth command that Miriam should have died. But Salome, thou didst with envy vex to see thyself outmatched in thy sex. Upon your sex's forehead, Miriam sat to grace you all like an imperial crown. But you, fond fool, have rudely pushed thereat and proudly pulled your proper glory down. One smile of hers, nay, not so much a look was worth a thousand, hundred thousand such as you. Judea, how canst thou, the wretch's brook, that robbed from thee the fairest of the crew, you dwellers in the now deprived land wherein the matchless Miriam was bred, why grasp not each of you a sword in hand to aim at me your cruel sovereign's head? Oh, when you think of Herod as your king and owner of the pride of Palestine, 
this act to you remembrance likewise bring. Tis I have overthrown your royal line. Within her purer veins, the blood did run that from her grand dam, Sarah, she derived, whose bell dam age the love of kings hath won. Oh, that her issue had as long been lived. But can her eye be made by death obscure? I cannot think, but it must sparkle still. Foul sacrilege to rob those lights so pure from out a temple made by heavenly skill. I am the villain that have done the deed, the cruel deed, though by another's hand. My word, though not my sword, made Miriam bleed. Hyrcanus, grandchild, died at my command that Miriam that I once did love so dear, the partner of my now detested bed. Why shine on you, son, with an aspect so clear? I tell you once again, my Miriam's dead. You could but shine if some Egyptian blouse or Ethiopian dowdy lose her life. This was then, wherefore, bend you not your brows, the king of Jewry's fair and spotless wife. Deny thy beams and moon refuse thy light. Let all the stars be dark. Let Jewry's eye no more distinguish which is day and night since her best birth did in her bosom die. Those fond idolaters, the men of Greece, maintain these orbs are safely governed, that each within themselves have gods apiece by whom their steadfast course is justly led. But were it so, as so it cannot be, they all would put their mourning garments on. Not one of them would yield a light to me, to me that is the cause that Miriam's gone. For though they feign their Saturn melancholy of sour moot behaviors and of angry mood, they feign him likewise to be just and holy. And justice needs must seek revenge for blood. Their Jove, if Jove he were, would sure desire to punish him that slew so fair a lass. For let us beauty set his heart on fire yet she not half so fair as Miriam was. My Mars would deem his Venus had been slain, so to recover her would never stick. For if he want the power her life to gain, then physics God is but an empiric. The queen of love would storm for beauty's sake, and Hermes too, since he bestowed her wit. The night's pale light for angry grief would shake to see chaste Miriam die and age unfit. But oh, I am deceived. She passed them all in every gift, in every property. Her excellencies wrought her timeless fall and they rejoiced, not grieved, to see her die. The Paphian goddess did repent her waste when she to one such beauty did allow. Mercurius thought her wit, his wit surpassed, and Cynthia envied Miriam's brighter brow. But these are fictions, there are devoid of sense. The Greeks but dream, and dreaming falsehoods tell. They neither can offend nor give defense, and not by them it was my Miriam fell. If she had been like an Egyptian black and not so fair, she had lived longer, she had longer lived. Her overflow of beauty turned back and drowned the spring from whence it was derived. Her heavenly beauty twas that made me think that it was with chastity could never dwell. But now I see that heaven in her did link a spirit and a person to excel. I'll muffle up myself in endless night and never let mine eyes behold light. Retire thyself, vile monster, worse than he that stained the virgin earth with brother's blood, still in some vault or den enclosed be, wherewith thy tears thou mayst beget a flood, which flood in time may drown thee. Happy day when thou at once shalt die and find a grave. The stone upon some vault someone shall lay, which monument shall an inscription have, 
and these shall be the words it shall contain. Here Hera, Hera delies that hath his Marian slain. Exit Herod. Whoever hath beheld with steadfast eye the strange events of this one only day, how many were deceived, how many die, that once today did grounds of safety lay? It will from them all certainty bereave, since twice six hours so many can deceive. This morning Herod held for surely dead, and all the Jews on Miriam did attend, and Constabarus rise from Salom's bed, and neither dreamed of a divorce or end. For Rorus joyed that he might have his wife, and Baba's sons for safety of their life. Tonight our Herod doth alive remain, the guiltless Miriam is deprived of breath, Stout Constabarus, both divorced and slain, the valiant sons of Baba have their death. Ferorus sure his love to be bereft, if Salome her suit unmade had left. Herod this morning did expect with joy to see his Miriam's much beloved face, and yet ere night he did her life destroy, and surely thought she did her name disgrace. Yet now again, so short do humours last, he both repents her death and knows her chaste. Had he with wisdom now her death delayed, he at his pleasure might command her death. But now he hath his power so much betrayed, as all his woes cannot restore her breath. Now doth he strangely lunatically rave, because his Miriam's life he cannot save. This day's events were certainly ordained, to be the waning, the warning to posterity. So many changes are therein contained, so admirably strange variety. This day alone our sages Hebrews shall, in after times the school of wisdom call. What a difference a day makes. <laughs> 24 little hours. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> I really like this epilogue uh, from the chorus. I really like that, you know. At the beginning of the day, everyone was getting up. They thought the world was like this. And now they're dead. Uh, <laughs> or they're in a totally different place. Um, yeah, we get... The, obviously, Herod goes off on one at the end. Um, and says lots of stuff. Um, and, you know, son, why are you still shining? Yeah. I don't understand. Mariam's dead. So what, why? No. Um, but we get this description of Mariam's execution. Uh, Nuntio, who doesn't pull any punches, has to be said. Uh, her body is divided from her head. Doesn't 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 hang about there, does he? Um, but yeah, we also get this uh, this description. Mariam's mother did did uh, you know decries her. I mean, it's, it's so weird. Having met Alexandra at the beginning of the play, who's going, I hate Herod. Herod is awful. Why are you crying about Herod? Basically comes on and said, no, I'm not with her. Uh, I'm with Herod. Um, so there's um, a bit of hypocrisy going on there. Um, something really weird there. Uh, and then, yeah, she, she goes to her death. Martyr-like. All very sad. Thoughts in the room? Uh, who wants to leap in? Rachel. Well, it kind of begins exactly like how it's just ended, where Miriam is uh, mourning that Herod's dead, or, you know, half mourning, maybe half pretending, who knows? And then it kind of, Herod's doing the same thing, you know? And there was that one, I think, chorus where it was like, uh, you know, once things change, we wish it went back to how it was, you know, like type of thing. Um, and he's doing the same here. Uh, and the, um, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, that, yeah. A certain, certain kind of symmetry uh, in place. Um, yeah. Um, uh, Eric. The emphasis on sort of um, how do you call it, like um, the cheek, the face, the whatever complexion and so forth, seems a bit like um, the emphasis we've had in Queen's Arcade, <laughs> ironically, because they they kind of go, oh, her face was so sweet, she couldn't possibly do something wrong, 
or Colax has better parts or whatever. And, you know, we can't, uh, yeah. So it, it just seems like this is some sort of interesting world theory that you shouldn't judge by appearances, basically. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it also, um, there was a bit that made me think of Medea <laughs> when, when um, I think it's when he was describing, uh, when it was, um, was it? Um, the, well, the two fears, Female characters basically arguing um, at the end, uh, sort of, and um, yeah, sort of in Medea, you have this sort of element of, it's called, um, you know that Medea is going to kill off the, the other female character, and yeah, it kind of doesn't end well. Mm. Um, I, I don't know, just the antagonism of the characters. Between the competitiveness of the characters for Herod's attention as well, it's interesting. Yeah, the, the you know that they you the, the it's, it's interesting you know that Salome manipulates um, Herod so completely, uh, and at the end he goes mad. Um, and um, I'm fairly certain in reality, in you know history, uh, Salome takes over. Um, uh, from from Herod. So basically, Salome wins. <laughs> Out of all of this, um, Salome is the victor. Uh, not so much in the play because Salome disappears in Act Four. Um, but you know, all of this is down to Salome. Actually, for all that that Herod is the king and is in theory in charge, Salome's made all of this happen. I like Salome. You know, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't want to meet her. Um, you know, wouldn't, definitely wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of her, but um, yeah. Um, whereas I, I'm oddly unmoved about the death of, of Mariam, uh, as, as weirdly, um, <laughs> and, and, and things uh, anyway. Um, uh, we're into final thoughts from uh, the room for we've all been here for the play overall. Um, so yeah, thoughts about uh, staging it. I'm I'm I. Definitely, in terms of live staging, I'm, I'm thinking the the act to do the most to is probably Act Five. You know that that there's there's a lot of text at the end of that play. There's a lot of Herod. Um, there's a lot of stuff I'd like to do to that. Um, but the rest of the play has just got some really great stuff and wonderful wonderful uh, material going on, uh, and I love it. Um, uh, so yeah, the odd tweak and uh, adjustment. Um, uh, definitely a position to be had about some of the the, the racially motivated uh, language, um, but that that's as as much to, uh, a de decision to be made with the cast and how it is cast as well, um, which uh, at this stage I do not know. Uh, Eric, any final thoughts uh, about the play overall? I don't know. It's just such a. There's a part of me going. I really want to see this on the stage just to see how it would work. But also, you know, there are problematic elements. But I mean, it's of its time, and also just kind of the um, the fact that it's one. I think you said it yesterday that it's one of the first original works by a woman that survives. Um, that kind of changes. Like it, the characters are so complex and believable compared to well, maybe not Herod, but I mean, Herod is a psychopath um, in any story. Um, <laughs> he's a believable psychopath yeah. yeah yeah but like sort of it's not that sort of stereotypical um you know vice figure or sort of um virtuous figure or whatever that they, they all have flaws and they have you know feelings thoughts wants needs and so on and so forth mm. um yeah i don't know it's just such an interesting play <laughs> mm. And unlike some of the the other neoclassical stuff that we've done, where you know you sometimes struggle a bit to dig into the characters and the formal language is a bit too formal, uh, I, I just don't feel that with this play at all. Actually, for most of the time, I mean, yeah, sure, so, uh, a trim here and there. Uh, some of the speeches are are, are a bit excessive, um, but it's it's just got such such life to it, um, and everyone is so flawed. Uh, Alan, any final thoughts? I must admit, I think the act that needs trimming is Act One because, as I commented yesterday, it's a very, very slow start, and it's only once it starts getting into dialogue that it starts to come to life. I mean, there's some damn good speeches in there, but there's an awful lot of verbiage in the whole piece, which I think 
just slow the damn thing down to a point where I was sort of losing the track of where the heck it was going. Mm. Um, and the number of screeching U-turns that Herod performs, you know, during the relatively brief period that he's actually in presence, mm. um, I think would need an awful lot of looking at to try and work out how the heck one does that. Um, because as you commented when you were reading it, um, okay, cold on this occasion, but a piece that you know reasonably well, mm. um, try, trying to make that credible with those abrupt screeching U-turns um, is damn difficult to make it work for an audience. I, I, I don't, it's, someone uh, did say when I brought that up, you know, that actually once rehearsed, it's it's probably a lot lot easier and, uh, and and also the way at times. But yeah, channeling John Hurt's Caligula is probably the, uh, the, the way to go. Um, Rachel, any final thoughts? Um, there, I think there was a lot of things that like with the ending that we got that uh, I was completely in a different play for, I think, part of it. Uh, Cause I did think for a while that Miriam really, you know, ha uh, was in a relationship with this counselor or yeah. Um, uh, uh, I think the, there's some, there's, there's, I think we have some of the, the, nicest drawn characters that i've read with uh you guys so far in any one of these plays because there's so much complexity and so much to do with them um there there's the there's issues of, of racism uh i don't know if it's from the playwright or the characters but i think that's also the period and i think it's brought up nice conversation around it and talking about and talking about this and that the 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 beauty not just the beauty standards but the discrimination also in the way that uh uh you know i didn't know that salome that the salome was a historically real queen you know in the way that cleopatra uh uh was degraded in this and that salome was degraded in this that yeah uh, the way that she's portrayed, you know, in popular culture, Cleopatra is different from the way the ancient world like perceived her because she was, you know, a mathematician and a poet and things like that. And uh, I don't know, it says a lot about double standards, maybe. I, I enjoyed it, even for its problematic elements or despite them. Um, I, I think there's such complexity here that there's a greater conversa conversation more conversation that could be had and i understand why you've made so many videos talking about this play because there's so much to unravel that there's not enough time uh yes um well podcasts podcasts uh we've only done two videos uh this is the second um uh elizabeth uh any final thoughts yeah i feel like there's some sort of imbalance to this text um Carrie put her, I feel she put her best foot forward right at the beginning. I enjoyed the way it started. I liked how the long speeches kind of devolved into these dialogue, um, these, these really snappy, powerful dialogue um, sections. But then again, at the end of the play, I'm thinking like, is the tragedy of Miriam usurped by the madness of Herod? It, it just becomes the Herod show. As soon as he turns up, it's all about him. And even though Miriam was guiltless, we have to be told that several times, that she was she was completely innocent and it's such a tragedy that she's dead. All we really focus upon is the fact that Herod's back and he's mad. Mm. So the, the play kind of went from a five star to like a three star for me. Um, but I would love to do it again because yeah. it was really fun. Yeah, I mean, th th yeah, I, 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 I do agree that sort of the tragedy of Mariam is that Act One is so tight. It is such a well put together. It's got a, a couple of weird digressions, 
but as a structure, Act One is so well put together. And then we have some scenes expanding the character, the range, and building up relation and, and putting all these characters in place. And then not all of them get used. And then, as you you said, just Herod goes mad, and we're here to watch an actor do Herod going mad, and and the focus is slightly lost. And it, it does. It, I just want to get in a time machine and say, "Hi, can we have some more scenes, please? Um, I want more scenes with Salome. I want more scenes with Mariam. I want Mariam to be slightly more developed before she dies. I'd like a death scene to be on stage. Um, I know that's not the neoclassical way." Um, it's got to be reported. That's the way you write plays. But even so, um, I, I think all of that is adjustable in performance. I think it, I think it does still work. But I, I think you're right that the, the 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 shame is that it starts so well and it's so good that actually it's very hard to sustain that that level of quality um, t to the very end. Um, oh well. Never mind. Still fab stuff. Still love Salome. <laughs> um, all that remains is to thank uh, all the wonderful readers for all their wonderful reading. Thank you very much, everyone. And goodbye. <laughs>